everybody, it's your friend Carson coming back at you again. I uh, figured I'd do a little update uh, on the uh, kiln project. Um, so anyways, I have done a little more work and I figured out how to splice together videos. So I'm going to be able to take this little video and put it with the next little video, etc, etc. It'll be better. So anyways, I'm going to turn you guys around and we'll show you where we're at. Alright, so we've got a couple little sub-assemblies that I've made up. This is a little sub-assembly. This is just a uh, adapter, a wall adapter for uh, two USBs. And then I've taken apart another adapter and epoxy glued that sucker on the top of it. I extended the leads. So basically this is an adapter on the bottom and with the leads coming out and this way it would have been like this. Um, so this is going to be mounted inside here. Where are you? There you are. Bam. Like that. Alright. And these, these two USB outlets are going to be the power supply uh, for this one will be a power supply for the uh, Bluetooth receiver and this one the one with the little blue stripe on it that's the 2 amp supply and that's actually going to be for the disco light so I figured out how I'm going to put disco lights in this thing and I have this 5 volt 2 amp DC supply so I'll be able to do that uh, very easily so I'm glad I used this the, the two uh, USB out power supplies. Also, here is the mod, uh, the little module for the um, Bluetooth, if you guys remember. And I just mounted it. This got kind of nasty, but I just mounted it. So you, I had to have access to the little tactile switch here to be able to pair it. And then this is just a little little microphone that the thing has in it so my uh, I'll be able to uh, receive phone calls on uh, through my kiln <laughs> so anyways and that's gonna be this panel here so this will be mounted like this on the side of the uh, on the side of the kiln also oh yeah and then I also with this little with this little module, I just uh, soldered directly onto the uh, directly on to the plug, and uh, I've got a couple leads coming out. Uh, so that'll be wired up. I also went ahead and did a little sub assembly on this amplifier board and its power supply. So again, it's really stupid, simple, um, you know, stuff that's you know, I just have kind of salvaged, and uh, this power supply is a, I bought it, uh, actually, because the one that came with the speakers was super heavy, and it wasn't a capacitive dropper style, it was a transformer style, so I wanted to get something that was lighter, um, but all I did is I basically uh, used some uh, two-part epoxy and glued these suckers together, and uh, again, I soldered some leads and I shortened up the barrel connector. I was going to desolder this female barrel, barrel connector, but I decided I would just uh, shorten up the lead. So that's what I did. Uh, and there's there's uh, heat shrink underneath this. This is just kind of gross. It's all quick and dirty stuff. Um, I also soldered in a couple of leads, uh, the speaker outs. So there's one here. And there's one, if I can find it, underneath there. And I also went ahead and epoxied those leads. Oh, I also epoxied those leads just to give the cords a little strain and relief. Here's another lead that I epoxied. That's for the male uh, 3.1 millimeter jack. Okay, so there's that assembly. Um, I went ahead and I was able to, I, this got a little bit nasty. I slipped, but I uh, went ahead and 
cut the hole for that. So that's going to go in there like this. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. That'll go in there like this. It's got a couple tabs on the back to hold it in. This will be in there like so. I mean, it'll be it'll be nice. You know, it'll be nice and flush and everything. All right. I've got my speakers are going to be basically where they are right now. This guy is going to be in there. This is hard to do. Uh, anyways, this thing is going to be glued to the top of the uh, box. This piece will get uh, JB welded to the top of the box. And um, so then I'll just have to cut. I have to drill a couple little holes, one for the uh, volume control on off and just one little one for the LED. Um, I went ahead and marked for where my solid state relay is going to go. It'll be mounted right there, yeah, somewhere right in there. Uh, and the reason I wanted to mount it right behind the controller is so I could get to all of those things with a long nose uh, or a long screwdriver. And um, the uh, they suggest using a heat sink with these things. Um, I'm just gonna try to allow the aluminum case to to be to be my heat sink. Uh, again, I've never really had a problem with these things, um, but if it does go out, I'll have to figure figure out, get a nicer one, use a heat sink, whatever. Um, which kind of brings me to one of the thoughts. So when I was kind of engineering this in my head, I was thinking about, you know, there's really, uh, <laughs> with kiln controllers, generally you want them to uh, have some kind of air movement through the controller so the components don't get too hot. And with speakers, you, you want it to be acoustically, um, you, you know, you have to worry about the acoustic properties. And so this is going to, this box is going to actually act as like a, um, an acoustic chamber, which means it's uh, going to be, um, need to be more or less sealed. Um, so they're kind of two opposing ideas. Um, and... You know, if I didn't have the stereo in here, I, what I would be doing is is I would have holes drilled. I was actually thinking of a way to uh, mount a little computer fan, a little computer exhaust fan, and have vent holes in this thing. Um, and then I was trying to design it in such a way where I could actually have a box inside of a box. And so I could have the acoustical uh, properties of a sealed box and then also have the cooling for the other electrical components. That is not going to happen with this. We'll just see how it holds up. Um, it's all kind of experimental. I've decided how I'm going to mount this onto the bottom or onto the side of my kiln. I'm going to mount it actually flush with the bottom of that. And I think that looks very smart. I think it looks sharp. Um, and that will also allow me to, uh, I'll be able to screw in when I go to mount this thing. I'm not going to, I'm not going to use the, the other plate that came with this. I'll just leave this open and this will become the side of this box. And I'll be able to catch these. I'll probably pre-drill a couple more holes like here and here and maybe one or two on the sides. And then on the bottom, I'll also pre-drill, and I'll be able to go in. Oh, I'll be able to go in right through here on the underside, coming this way. Um, which brings me to my next thing, which is I am going to drill a little channel in here, and for the LED circuit that'll be coming off of here, it'll come out 
And since this will be flush mounted, you won't see any wires. It'll come out and go to the underside of the actual kiln itself. And my plans right now, since I've got this kind of pretty generous lip, uh, it's uh, probably a half an inch lip, I think. Um, I'll be able to come in uh, with a positive negative low voltage and uh, I'll either go around the perimeter with uh, with these LEDs uh, or go down the middle. I haven't decided yet. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to make like a, a loop um, and I, that should be pretty easy. The LEDs I have coming are uh, eight millimeter uh, RGB LEDs, so they change colors and they change it automatically. They're not the kind with the four, with the four, the anode, the cathode, and the inputs. They're the kind with just an anode and a cathode, and so they have a little chip that automatically cycles them through all their colors. Um, so all the colors will kind of be randomized, and, it, and it'll all shoot down. Uh, down towards whatever the kiln is sitting on and I think it'll make it a, a really cool effect I'm gonna have to wire these things in uh, All in parallel with their all with each of their own resistors. That's how I've designed it I'm not as f super familiar with LEDs, but uh, Anyway, so that's that so today I Think my goals are to finish cutting the holes. I need to cut holes in the bottom of this thing for the uh, for the speakers I also need to just drill a couple of holes for the to mount the solid state relay I need to drill a hole somewhere down in here for the strain relief for the cord that'll be coming into this thing ultimately um, I'll have a couple more holes to drill uh, but I'm gonna that'll those are the main holes the other ones are gonna be for switches and stuff um, I also want to go ahead and, and put my thermocouple in. It'll go somewhere around here, and I might get to it today. I might not. I need to put a couple of holes in the side here for the element leads that'll come out, and they're, they're going to be going through insulators, so those are going to have to be fairly generous holes. So that's it for right this second. Um, I will probably make a little video again updating the, uh, the progress.